Some very big changes are happening right now to the U.S. housing market. So, for example, inventory has increased by about 36% compared to one year ago. Also, we're seeing the share of price reductions also increasing as well to at least a five-year high during the same time frame, which is the end of June. I have a lot to share in today's video. Let's go ahead and dive right in. And of course, before we get started, if you guys want a real estate agent referral anywhere nationwide, please email me at jason at meetjasonwalter.com or check out my website, which is realestateteamfinder.com. I, I know it's a challenging market for home buyers, but there's still people looking to buy a house. Also, there's lots of people looking to sell their houses right now because we're seeing new listings rising year over year for quite some time as well. In any case, here is the latest report from uh, realtor.com just posted yesterday at the time I filmed this video, but just like my previous videos, I did not even read it. However, I will provide a link in the video description below. So please let me know your thoughts regarding if my analysis of their data agrees to what they're saying as well. I don't even read theirs. Anyways, go to uh, their, uh, what is this? Uh, Realtor.com slash research slash data. Click on weekly inventory and then click on that link right there. It takes you more or less to this information. Asking prices, inventory, new listings, days in the market, and also the number of price reductions compared to one year ago. These are all the year over year changes on a national level. So the most recent stats we have, actually I missed uh, one week ago, so this is actually the first time I made this video in about two weeks. Anyways, the most recent uh, data we have from them is the uh, week ended June 22nd this year. Asking prices were flat last week, and have been flat for about one month now, uh, which is pretty astonishing. And in fact, asking prices have been relatively flat ever since February this year due to rising inventory levels and 7% mortgage rates, which of course is keeping home sales at, I think it's fair to say, rock bottom levels. Stagnant growth of asking prices leads prices of close home sales in the coming months. So you, you can't see you know, runaway price growth if asking prices are flat. Uh, we saw runaway price growth uh, right at the onset of COVID in late 2020, especially 2021, where asking prices and close home prices were increasing big time each and every month. But right now, for about one month now, we're seeing stagnant growth of asking prices on a national level. Of course, every housing market's different though, right? And I'll share a little bit regarding that in today's video. And by the way, at the end of this video, I'll provide a summary of what um, of these findings and also kind of a snapshot about what happened uh, in our U.S. housing market over the past one week. I missed last week because I actually was in Toronto for about a week, um, but I made a lot of videos before I left. That's why you guys saw videos last week. Anyways, uh, and by the way, they have a lot of inventory in Toronto, uh, Canada, by the way, uh, big increase because a 30-year fix is virtually non-existent there. They basically have a 30-year amortized uh, loan, but it's only fixed for five years. So you have to reassess it every five years, which is wild. I told them we have a 30-year fixed rate mortgage. They was like, whoa, that's crazy. Anyways, yeah, I, I couldn't imagine buying a house there if your payment and your rate you know, basically can change um, every five to seven years. I just couldn't imagine. Uh, but I, I tried to make a video that while I was there, but I, I didn't have time, unfortunately. Anyways, let's talk about uh, inventory levels because inventory increased by 36.1% year over year. Uh, besides the week ended May 25th, that's the largest year over year increase since April 2023. Also, there's been more houses for sale this year compared to last year for the past 33 consecutive weeks. That goes back to mid-November last year. This, of course, is good news for home buyers. We want to see more houses for sale, giving more home buyers more options, which of course limits the growth rate in home prices. However, though, even though inventory has increased by 36%, it is not skyrocketing, uh, partially due to the fact that new listings are actually slowing down, or I should say the growth rate of new listings is actually slowing down. And more on that here in a little bit. Also, inventory has been increasing due to two main reasons. We're seeing more new listings compared to last year, even though it's uh, slowing down uh, as of late. And also we're seeing a very low level of close home sales as well. Now, if you guys follow the channel, you guys all know I, um, I track multiple sources uh, of data. So here is uh, inventory according to altosresearch.com. Fantastic website if you guys want to learn about 
you know, housing trends on a national level, statewide level, but also for each of the major metros as well. So for uh, last year, I should say uh, June 23rd last year, there was approximately 461,000 existing houses for sale nationwide. Now there's 634,000. So we have approximately 173,000 more existing houses for sale compared to 12 months ago. That's an increase of 38%. Now, something that, uh, that um, caught my attention, and I, of course, have been making this video for you guys for, what, two, three years, maybe? Um, the growth rate of inventory has been paid at 38%. So uh, we, we're not seeing uh, inventory decreasing compared to last year, but not increasing as well. It's basically moving in line for the past month uh, with the same time frame in 2023. That's why the growth rate has been paid at a gain of 38% for the past three weeks. But wait, there's more because uh, I actually wanna look at the growth rate of inventory so far this year compared to last year. So there's approximately 135,000 more homes for sale right now compared to the start this year by my own analysis of altosresearch.com's data. And that represents a 27% growth rate so far this year. Compare that to last year during the same time frame inventory decreased by 2%. So this year, rising by 27%, last year, down 2%. So in other words, supply was down last year, but inventory has been uh, on the rise so far this year. Also, in looking at monthly data from uh, Realtor.com, inventory has been rising faster compared to 2017, 18, and 19. It's up by about 18% from January, through May this year, compared to a gain of only 9% on average from 2017 through 2019 for January through May. However, the growth rate so far this year is not rising as fast as 2022 because inventory started to skyrocket in May of 2022 due to rates moving from about 3% to about 5% in a matter of a few months. And of course, because of that rise of uh, rates, that caused inventory levels to skyrocket because sales basically fell off a cliff. So to summarize, inventory is not only up by 38% year over year, but it's also rising faster compared to pre-COVID levels. Will that change given the small rise of new listings or will home sales drop, causing inventory to increase further? Uh, time will tell, and I'll definitely keep you posted regarding that. Um, also, looking at inventory levels compared to the same week of 2019, we're still down greatly, down by about 33% right now. So here's a look at altosresearch.com regarding inventory. As you can see right here, um, 634,000, much higher compared to last year, but also this is really a three-year high because it's higher than last year, higher than 2022 and 21, but not nearly as high as 2020 and 2019. Uh, back then, we had approximately 947,000 houses for sale, now we only have 634,000. Inventory has been rising faster so far this year compared to last year, but it's not increasing at the same rate as we saw in 2022 when we had our last housing market correction. So one of the reasons why inventory has been on the rise is due to this right here. So excluding the Easter holiday week, new listings have been higher compared to the same time frame one year ago for the past 34 consecutive weeks. A new trend though, and this is causing a kind of stagnant growth rate of inventory, is that the growth rate of new listings has completely lost momentum. This is because new listings has only been increasing by single digits, less than 10%, for the past eight consecutive weeks. In contrast, we saw double digit gains of new listings compared to one year ago for much of February and March. This is slowing down the growth rate of housing inventory as discussed uh, previously. And because we're not seeing the growth rate of uh, inventory levels skyrocket, this is putting less downward pressure on home prices. So stay tuned though, because this could be an entirely different scenario. If new listings were surging, for example, let's just say that new listings were increasing by 30% instead of a gain of 7.4%, that would cause inventory to skyrocket as well which could um, get us into a scenario in which supply is far outpacing. I mean, like far, far outpacing than demand. And that would cause home prices to decrease as well. But right now, we're seeing single-digit gains of new listings 
Um, before that, we saw double digit gains from basically uh, February through the end of April. And because of this uh, single digit gain of new listings, this is one of the reasons why inventory levels have been more or less paid at around 35% for about two months. And again, this would look a lot worse if new listings were absolutely skyrocketing, which of course would cause upward pressure on uh, inventory levels as well. Okay, let's change gears slightly here and talk about days in the market or how fast or how slow houses are selling. Last week, it took two days longer to sell a house compared to one year ago. This is actually a big change because for the past two months, houses are taking longer to sell compared to the same time frame 12 months ago. Last week, houses on average again took two days longer to sell. This is much different compared to October 2023 through March this year, where houses on average were selling faster compared to the previous 12 months. Let's watch this closely in the months ahead because if inventory becomes more stale, this would lead to more price reductions as well. Speaking of price reductions, the price drops increased by 52.2% year over year. Also, the number of price drops has been higher compared to last year for the past 22 consecutive weeks. This is likely due to the uh, you know, big increase of inventory up by uh, 36% and of course, elevated mortgage rates as well which of course is keeping home sales at relatively, I should not, not say relatively, at it keeping home sales at very, very low levels. Let's take a look at altosresearch.com for the share of price reductions. According to them, for the week ended June 21st, the, first, the share price shops is at 37%. So basically one third of all houses for sale right now nationwide have already reduced the asking price. That's the share of price shops. Um, at 37%, this is at least a five-year high during the same time frame, going back to at least uh, the first week of 2019. However, it's lower compared to the peak, which was set back in more or less uh, mid-November at 43% uh, back in November of 2022. One thing to keep in mind, though, is that the share price reductions tends to peak during the winter months. And here we are in basically the heart of spring home buying season, and we're getting very close to the uh, peak of last year at 39%, which back then was back in mid-November as well. All right, if you guys are still watching today's video, I appreciate you guys so much. Please hit the like button, but I also wanna provide a summary of today's video as well, because of course that was a lot of numbers to go over, right? So number one, the growth rate of asking prices nationwide, uh, I should say for the nation as a whole, has stalled since February this year. This is likely due to a significant rise of housing supply and elevated mortgage rates as well. Speaking of, uh, of housing supply, uh, housing inventory increased by 36% last week. That was one of the biggest year-over-year -year increases since April of 2023. This rise of inventory is caused by a drop in home sales and a rise of new listings from the previous year. However, there's still 33% fewer House for sale right now compared to 2019. Real estate is local and regional though, right? Every housing market's different. So as of May, the state of Texas has more existing houses for sale compared to May of 2019. So more or less what a five-year high in the state of Texas. Uh, they have approximately 2% more house for sale compared to pre-COVID levels. That's based on um, Resi Club Analytics.com using um, uh, Realtor.com's latest data. On top of that, Florida, Arizona, and Idaho are not too far off behind as well. Uh, Florida is only down by 5% compared to uh, May of 2019. Arizona is only down by 2%. And Idaho is only uh, down by 1%. Now, speaking of that, here's ResiClub.com's a uh, map of the US here looking at inventory this May compared to May of 2019. So again, Texas is up by 2%, Idaho not too far off behind, also Arizona not too far off behind as well. Florida only uh, only down by 4.5%. Whereas in California, where I live and work as a real estate agent in the greater Sacramento area, we're only down or we are down by 39%. So much different compared to Texas for example. Um, but the Northeast is one of the regions here in the U.S. that ha has the lowest amount of inventory compared to pre-COVID levels. So, for example, Maine, inventory is down by a whopping 60%. Also in Connecticut, inventory is down by 77%. 
quite the difference compared to Texas, up by 2% from five years ago. The reason why closely fall inventory, especially compared to 2019, um, 18, and 17, is because this is a really good indication of the healthiness of the housing market, right? So in Texas, there's uh, four metros, according to Redfin, in which home prices, I mean, the median sold price is down year over year. There's only four metros out of the 50 most populous nationwide in which prices are down year over year. And four of them, all four of them, I should say, are located in Texas, likely due to the significant rise of inventory there compared to other markets. In any case, getting back to my analysis here, number three, 78% uh, of homeowners who have a mortgage on their house are locked into an interest rate below 5%. That's based on uh, data from Freddie Mac through January this year. There, this, is, of course, has been limiting the amount of houses for sale and thus keeping house inventory well below 2019's levels. New listings are higher compared to last year, but we're still seeing only single digit gains of new listings for the past two months. Let's watch the rate of increase of inventory in the coming months. Number four, the share price reductions is at least a five year high during the same time frame and has been rising faster than 2023. Number five, last week houses on average took two days longer to sell compared to the previous year. Uh, that is a lag indicator, though, because that's a base on a closed home sale. But wait, there's more. <laughs> One thing I didn't mention in today's video is rates. So average mortgage rates for a 30-year fix are well below October 2023's rates at 8%. Right now, at the time of filming this video, which is on uh, Friday, June 28th, the average 30-year fix, according to the Mortgage News Daily, is around 7%. Also, we have a housing affordability crisis right now. Uh, basically, housing affordability is very close to all-time record lows due to a double whammy, record high home prices and elevated rates. Number two, the most recent stats we have uh, regarding application numbers uh, to buy houses. This is from the MBA. Uh, people uh, applying for mortgages to buy houses, that decreased by 13% year over year for the week ended June 21st. That's from the MBA. Also, the National Association of Realtors reported that pending home sales for existing houses in May fell 7% year over year, and also it fell to a new record low, excluding the onset of COVID. Their data, by the way, goes back through 2001. So basically, the level of pending home sales is more or less at a 23-year low. And by the way, I did not make a video regarding that, but I probably will next week because uh, that um, uh, report basically showed how we're going to see a very low level of closed home sales in the coming months due to the fact that pending home sales are basically at all-time record lows going back to 2001. So we're going to see this uh, environment in which um, transactions are few and far between because we're, we're seeing a lack of contracts being signed right now. Uh, every market's different though, right? This is just national trends. In addition, new home construction sales, which is from the U.S. Census Bureau, they define a new home sale as a sales agreement signed between a buyer and a home builder or a deposit taken by the home builder. So this is more acting like a pending home sale than a closed home sale for a brand new house. That decreased a whopping 17% year over year in May. I made a separate video about that a few days ago, so check a look, take a look at that because this is a, a big, big decrease. New, new home sales decreased by double digits compared to April, but they also decreased by 17% from 12 months ago. Therefore, home builders offering closing cost credits, lower mortgage rates, and free builder upgrades did not help boost home sales in May. What's also staggering about this is that the drop in new home sales is, I mean, it's laughable because there's more new houses for sale this May than any other month going back to February of 2008. Did you guys hear me? Inventory, the highest levels since 2008 regarding new home construction, but sales decrease a whopping 17% in May. Can you see? Uh-oh. Number three, looking forward for the nation as a whole, asking prices are flat, inventory is up significantly, Homes are sitting on the market slightly longer compared to one year ago, and we're seeing a rise in price drops. All these metrics points to a softening housing market, 
but it could look a lot, lot worse, right? If mortgage rates were um, were basically skyrocketing, let's just say they were rising to 8% plus again, and if new listings were also skyrocketing as well, that would be a recipe for disaster causing inventory to basically skyrocket, which of course would cause prices to fall. But we're not seeing that, right? Inventory has been increasing, but as I shared with you guys, inventory is basically rising the same rate last year for about one or two months. We're also seeing new listings all increasing by single digits. It's not skyrocketing. And that is all limiting any price corrections that could be ahead. Plus, every house market is different. Inventory in California and the Northeast part of the United States, as I shared, is down greatly compared to pre-COVID levels, whereas inventory is piling up in Texas. Number four, the most important one, of course, especially if you guys are still watching today's video, I appreciate you guys. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for watching today's video. If you guys want a real estate agent referral anywhere <laughs> nationwide, uh, check out my website, which is realestateteamfinder.com. Also, please subscribe if you haven't done so already. I post frequent housing market updates in an unbiased manner. I hope you guys agree with that. Um, so you guys can make a more informed decision about whether to buy or sell a house. With that said, I appreciate you guys. Have an awesome day and we'll see you on the next video.